one thing the sun sync inverter is amazing to do is parallel or multi inverter where you can have lots and lots of inverters wired together at the moment we've got many systems where they've installed up to 15 inverters but we are looking to expand that maybe up to 50 inverters for really big systems it can do it without a problem so I thought I'd make a very short video just to explain it because I can see lots of questions coming onto the forum and stuff asking about how to wire, excuse me, how to wire our inverter in parallel or in a multi inverter mode. Well, first of all, the inverters have to communicate. So you have to have one is a master and one is a slave. Now, that's just to wire two inverters together. So you choose one to become a master and you set the mod bus as uh, zero one. The second inverter, provided they're obviously on the same phase because just two inverters, that will be uh, classed as a slave. And if you go onto the advanced settings onto, on the inverter, you'll see an advanced setting page. And so you select one as master, O1, and one as slave, O2. So every inverter has to have a unique mod bus number. So if you've got 10 inverters, it'd be mod bus number would be one to 10. And if they're all on the same phase, they will all be, you have one master and nine slave, and it'd be marked as phase A. So the phase A, phase B, phase C, relating to the three phase connection. You must connect the inverters together. There's a, there's a, there's a CAN bus connection. Um, it's nothing to do with the battery connection. It's a separate connection. And so you connect the CAN bus to, to input, input. It doesn't matter which way around you put it. And you can see the connection on, and it's actually covered on the, the inverter and it's covered in the manual. So you need the CAN bus cable. Some advice, don't make the cable too long because you can get noise on the cable because inverters are a complicated thing. You've got, you've got a computer in there, lots of things going on. So keep the cable relatively short. Another bit of advice, if you've got um, an, an odd number of inverters, it doesn't matter, make the center one the master and the two sides the slave and you'll still number it one to five. So use the center as your master and the other slave. Now, if you're using three inverters together as a three phase, there is two ways to connect three phase. If you're on a house that requires, or a building that is using motors, that requires phase rotation. So you've got the rotation of the phases. Um, so if you're gonna drive a motor, for example, and you're running at 440 volts or 380 volts, whatever it is, depending on where you are in the world, um, then you would need phase rotation. And to create the phase rotation, and simply on three inverters, all three would be a master. So you have a master on phase A, you'd have a, ma and, and don't forget this SN number, the serial number would be one. You have a master on phase two, and the SN number would be two. And you have a master on phase C, and that would create the three phases. Make the center inverter as your um, link together, so you've got one, and then you've got the connected either side. So you've got three masters. If you then want to put six inverters onto a three phase, then the following three would be a slave to each of the masters. So master one would be a slave, master, um, and then you have a phase B with a master and a slave, and then a phase C with a master and slave. And you simply connect it that way. Uh, it will work. It will tell you if it's not communicating properly or if there's a problem with your cable, it will not work. Um, and there's fault guides and diagnostics covered in the manual. So you can, you can check that and you will get an error um, with the communication cables not functioning correctly. So if you select it under um, multi-inverter, which is the advanced settings and uh, multi-inverter. So if you're gonna use more than one inverter together, which is, works brilliantly, absolutely brilliantly. Another thing is you must connect all your batteries um, together. So if you've got three inverters, six inverters, whatever, your, your batteries must be connected onto a common um, bus. So the positive and the negative on the battery side is one common bus, which is shared among them. Um, you can put your charger, you can put your MPPT in each of the individual inverters, because many people use multi-inverter uh, on the MPPT. Now, another thing, if you're going to bigger systems, um, trying to when you the inverter start up you don't want it to start directly onto load if it's going to start to load you may need to put a contactor in so you may need to put some sort of device in so when all the inverters are powered up you've got a final contact that closes and maybe makes a three-phase connection as a single connection um, it, it does give it a little bit of protection 
Um, this is a common problem if you've got lots of inverters. And the problem is if one relay closes before the other, then you can get an overload. And even if it's just a millisecond, you can get an overload on that inverter. And I've seen it on many, many different inverters. Um, our, our eight kilowatt is very robust. And generally, it will take 100% um, overload. So if you're running it with six inverters, no need, especially on three phase, it, it's fine. And even if, it, even, if it, even if one of them hit the full load before the other, it, it, it won't cause a problem. We've never really had any, any, um, any problems on that, and they work great. Um, one thing, make sure they're all running the same operating system. You can't have different operating systems going on at the same time, so they must all be the same. If you've got different ones, then suggest update it and make sure they're all running the same, you've got the same system, and again, it will work perfectly. There is another option on three phase, you can have an unsynchronized three phase. So therefore each inverter is operating on the three phase, but you don't need the phase rotation. And therefore, if you're on a house, a particular house where you haven't got three phase equipment, so there's nothing at the cross phase, you can do that, but be very careful because if you have got stuff across phase and you wire it in that configuration, and that means where the three inverters are wired separately, and they're not needing to communicate together because each phase is treated as its own circuit. It could be, especially when it's off grid. So it's off grid, um, you, 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 you could get an imbalanced phase. Um, so if you, you'd only do that um, if you, you really have absolutely nothing across phases, there's no motors and stuff. And some houses run three phase air conditioning or three phase geysers. So you would need the three, you'd need the rotation, the correct phase rotation. Otherwise you get all sorts of strange and weird voltages going on. And that way you must communicate. But some houses don't have anything and everything runs on 230 volts. And the only reason they have three phase is just to reduce the wiring coming into the house. And so therefore it doesn't matter. You can have an unbalanced three phase. Um, but you, you, um, this is something that should be common sense anyway with most electrical engineers. Um, that's basically covering it. So the, basically the, the thing is they must have comms cable if you're connecting them together. You must select on the multi-inverter. So you have a master and a slave and every phase has a master and a slave and then you select your phase and that will give you a correct angle. And don't forget to select the parallel box. And at the end of it, always press OK to keep the memory. And you have to do this to every inverter. You have to program each, each inverter up. You, can't, you can parallel the load outputs to work offload. That's one of the beauty, beauties of it. So if you, you, you your essential loads give you correct three phase rotation on your essential loads, your grid side, which is your non-essential loads. And you, you, if you've got three phase, you use three CT coils. If you're using a single phase, you use one CT coil and that will, that will then control your export. So just, there, there are a few things that just get to the sample. It, it works beautiful. We've had many, many tried, tested systems in the marketplace. So to say without, we just continue to repeat because it is important. Make sure your batteries are on a common bus. They're very important. Make sure you select the parallel setting and make sure you select the correct master and slave. So if you're on a single phase, one master, the rest is slave. On a three phase, you have three master and the rest is slave. It must be balanced so you can only use um, three, six, nine on a three phase. On a single phase, it doesn't matter. You can go up to 15 inverters. If with larger systems, you would need a contactor to protect it. Um, so that's it. One thing about if you want to use a charging circuit, I did mention it using a generator, then you need, if you're using a gen set and you want the gen set to charge the batteries while you're using the battery, then as mentioned in the previous video, you actually need to use another inverter to do that. However, if you want the gen set to take over from a grid, then you can do and using a changeover contactor uh, on the grid side, because the grids are all linked together and you can use a three phase or a single phase generator, it works fine. Uh, and the generator will take the load, the full load and supply everything. And if you're on non-essentials, um, then it will be grid side anyway, so it won't make any difference. And your essentials will be on your load side. So just make sure your generator is big enough to take both sides of it. If you're just running on your, lo your load side, your maximum load per inverter is about 12 kilowatt. So um, on the eight kilowatt units, uh, and on the five kilowatt, obviously it's much smaller. So just, just to, and it is, it is in the instruction manual. So read the instructions. All of this is covered in the instructions. 
Um, I haven't showed you on the screen because the screen shots are all there and you'll see it. it's very clear and it's easy. So hopefully this answers quite a few questions. Thank you.